All right, welcome back, everybody. In this episode, we will discuss, uh, what is it? Authorization, status codes, and magic numbers. So let's get going. Now, if I switch to Firefox, yeah, in the last episode, we added support for displaying all notes that were created by a particular user. So in this case, we have three, but of course, in the database, it looks like we have five notes. And notice that two of the notes were created by a different user, and that's why we don't see it here. Okay, so this is fine. Well, at least initially it seems fine. I can click through, yeah, it looks good, but actually it's not good. Uh, and maybe you picked up on this in the last episode. We have unwittingly introduced a major security concern. Think about it. What's to keep me right up here from passing through the ID of a note that was not created by me? Let's give it a shot. How about this one right here? The note with an ID of six was created by somebody else. Okay, let's see what happens if I try to load that note. Ah, it works. So again, this is a really big problem. Granted, in this case, they're dumb notes. It doesn't really matter. But in real life, the notes you create should not be accessible to anyone that has access to a browser, right? Clearly, uh, this is a really big problem. So this is where authorization comes into play. Let's see how. Let's go into note.php. And yeah, remember, this is the controller that handles displaying uh, this particular page. And yeah, we can see right here, we are grabbing the note that has an ID that matches the one that's currently in the query string, as we see right there. So yeah, not a lick of authorization in place. All right, so we have a few ways that we might deal with this. Your first thought might be to simply update your SQL query like this. Select star from notes where the user ID matches the current user and the ID matches the one that's in the query string. Okay, so now if I were to clean this up real quick, we could pass them through. User is, and I'm gonna just hard code it for now because remember, we haven't yet reviewed authentication, but I promise we'll cover that in this series. At the moment though, we're just going to assume that the user with an ID of one is the currently authenticated user until we learn more. Okay, so let's give this a shot. If we come back and give it a refresh, I think it's gonna change. And it does, we get a warning trying to access array offset on value of type bool. Okay, so maybe at the beginning of this series, you wouldn't have known what that means, but now you do. What is type bool? A Boolean, true or false. So it looks like we have a value that's a Boolean, could be true, could be false, but we're trying to interact with that value as if it were an array. And why would that be? Well, let's inspect it. We'll come back to PHP Storm and I will pass note to our DD function and we'll inspect it. Give it a refresh and sure enough, it's false. So now that makes perfect sense. We load the view and we are interacting with false as if it were an array. And that's why we get that error or that warning. Okay, so why is note equal to false? Well, it makes perfect sense. We didn't get anything from the database. Let's try a different record. We'll come back. Here's the ID of seven. And that note was created by the current user, so we return uh, the appropriate record. Okay, so this seems to be working, but how do we deal with situations like this where false is returned? Well, we could do something like this. We could say, well, if there is not a note, then there was some kind of issue, right? So we can call our abort function and be done. So let's give it a shot. We come back to Firefox, give it a refresh, and yeah, it works, so I guess that's good, but it doesn't work in the way I would like. And here's what I mean. If you think about it, there's a couple different reasons why note would evaluate to false. Think about it. One reason would be you're trying to access a note with an ID that doesn't exist. So if I were to switch back, let's view the note with an ID of 6,000 or, or whatever that is, 600,000. Well, there is no corresponding record in the database. So we should say, sorry, page not found. But another reason might be due to this little section that we added here. All right, so imagine, um, yes, a corresponding note exists in the database, but you did not create it. Okay, so that's a very different thing. In the first example, we display a 404 because a note was not found. That makes sense. But in the second example, that's an authorization issue. Yes, the note exists, so it was found, but you are not authorized to view it. 
All right, so we can see that there's two different reasons why we might want to abort. And when we have these two different reasons, it might be useful to provide a hint or a status code that indicates what the problem is. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get rid of this check here, bring it back to a simple find note with the corresponding ID. Then we can say, well, if there's not a note, abort. We want to display a 404. But then let's add another one. We might say, well, if the note's user ID does not equal one, well, then you're trying to access a note that was created by someone else. So we would abort in that case. But again, the 404 status code isn't quite right. Remember, a status code of 404 means page not found. But as we just discussed, in this particular example, that's not appropriate. Instead, I need some way to signal that, well, it was found, but you are not authorized to see it. And as it turns out, that corresponding status code is 403, a 403 forbidden. Okay, so now we've separated the two different reasons why we might not be able to access uh, this particular note. So let's go back to Firefox, give it a refresh, and we get uncut PDO exception invalid parameter. No oh yeah, I'm sorry. We, we removed the user parameter, but I forgot to remove the binding as well. All right, so come back, give it a refresh, and there we go. So notice in this example, we are trying to access some fictional note that does not exist in the database. So we get a 404 page not found. But this time, let's change it back to two, which is a note that was created by someone else. Okay. And you can see right here, it's trying to load our 403 uh, view. So it seems like everything is working. We just need to create a corresponding view for that particular status code. So I'm gonna copy 404, I renamed it to 403, and I'll update the heading to unauthorized. Okay, so come back, give that a refresh, and there we go. And in fact, if you wanna be crystal clear here, you could say you are not authorized to view uh, this page, just to make it crystal clear to the user. So switch back to notes. I see my notes. I can view a note, but yeah, if I try to tweak it to a note that I do not have access to, I'm going to see a 403 forbidden. Okay, so let's wrap up by quickly talking about uh, magic numbers. Okay, so on this page alone, I can see one, two, what you might call magic numbers. And again, what is a magic number? Uh, you can think of it as a number that has significance or, or special meaning that is not explicitly declared. So yeah, in this case, one. What does that mean? What is the significance of one? Well, we know the answer to that question right now. We haven't yet reviewed uh, sessions and authentication. So I'm hard coding that one to signify or to represent the current user, right? But yeah, imagine six months from now, you might forget what that one refers to. And this happens all the time, by the way. You're looking at code and you think, well, what does that mean? What, what is the meaning of that number? What does it refer to? Why is it important? And yeah, even if its meaning might seem obvious to you at the time, it could be that a year later or, or multiple years later, if this is a long running application, uh, it may not be so obvious. So one option would be to extract that to a variable. Let's just assign a name. I could say current user ID equals one. And now I can substitute it here. Yeah, it's just a small tweak. And actually notice how we're breaking that guideline from an episode or two ago, where we noticed that we only declared a variable once, so we inlined it, right? But there's also situations where even though it's only being declared once, it still serves a purpose. It serves the purpose of identifying what the value is. It provides more clarity uh, as to what the value is. And that's what we're gonna do here. All right, next, 403. Yeah, this is another good example. Uh, you'll definitely get to a point in your career where you see the number 404 or 403, it's attached or related to a response of some kind, and you instantly know what it is. Oh, 404 not found or 403 forbidden. It makes perfect sense. Uh, but it still doesn't change the fact that, well, it is kind of a magic number. And maybe it would be courteous to other people, uh, maybe maybe those who are not as familiar with status codes, it might just be courteous to let them know what this means, to provide a little extra clarity. And as you'll find with programming, so much of this is figuring out how to provide extra clarity. How can I simplify this? How can I make this more clear? 
How can I remove the need for a comment? This is what so much of programming is. So how could we do this? Well, I could do the same thing as what we did up here. I could say forbidden equals 403. And yeah, I mean, that would work. But in this particular example, I actually don't like this approach. And the reason is because, well, I might want to abort with a 403 all over the place. So yeah, would I just have to assign it to a variable every single time? Um, I don't like that. Instead, why don't we do this? Remember, when you're building applications, there's nothing preventing you from creating another file. I, I often find in the early stages, sometimes developers feel like, well, I gotta work with what I have available to me. And that's not true. If you wanna create another file, you know how you do it? You just create another file and then you keep going. I know it sounds simple, but trust me, that is often a roadblock for newcomers. So in this case, why don't we create a class to represent this response? I'm gonna call it response.php. We'll make it a class. And you learned about constants uh, a number of episodes ago. So why don't we uh, create constants for each of the common status codes that we might want to return. So we'll start with the 404. What does that mean? Not found. So we'll call it not found equals 404. Let's do another one for forbidden. Forbidden equals 403. Okay, so now check this out. If I come back into our note, if I want, yeah, I can bring this back to what we had before. Stick with 403. And in fact, in many cases you might find you don't have to worry about the magic number because again, it, its meaning is so ubiquitous. So I'm showing you lots of ideas and examples for when you might um, refactor away from magic numbers, but that doesn't mean they're never allowed. If you decide, no, everybody knows what a 403 means, then, then, then keep it, right? It's all give and take. You decide what's appropriate and what needs to be uh, clarified a bit more. Okay, but anyways, if we instead require our new little response class, I can now reference it within our note like this, abort with a response of forbidden. Okay, so notice it's a small little change, but it does improve readability. And all of programming is making small little changes that improves readability and functionality. So think about it, before we were saying abort with this magic number 403 that you are supposed to know what it means. But after we're saying abort with a response of forbidden, we're just tweaking the clarity that much. And I think that's a pretty good refactor. Okay, so a little cleanup like that. And yeah, here is our note controller as it currently sits. Still lots of room for improvement, but I think we're making pretty good progress. Okay, so to wrap up, we try to track down the note that has an ID that matches the one in the query string. But if we couldn't find any matching note from the database, of course we abort. 404, page not found. I don't know what you want here. Otherwise, if there is a corresponding note, then we continue on and we do a second check. Well, was this note created by the current user? And if it was not, well, then once again, we should abort with a response of forbidden. Otherwise, if a note exists in the database and it was created by the current user, only at that point do we continue on where we load the view and we display the details of that corresponding note. All right, let's do our final test in Firefox and we will be done for the day. So let's review, how about this one here? This note was created by me, so I see it, no problem. Next though, the note with an ID of two was not created by me, so I get an unauthorized. And then finally, if I do some kind of ID that doesn't exist in the database, then I get a 404 not found. Okay, everything seems to be working and we've solved that pesky authorization issue. I'll see you in the next episode. There's much more to cover.